by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave excellent job thank you very much tim thank you pack 288 thank you john messenger and now ladies and gentlemen for the last time in 2005 are you ready to go nascar racing at motor drome speedway top dog challenge dash of the season. Every driver on the speedway has already won a top dog challenge, including Brandon Manns, the pole sitter in car 15, and there's the green flag. The only event that does not pay points on the speedway right now, Rick Miller and Richard Mitchell make contact, battling for second. Keep in mind, this is a non-points event here on the final night of points racing at Motordrome this season. Mitchell and Will Trout side by side for third. Last week, that was the battle for the feature win. Will Trout prevailed and starts fourth in this top dog challenge, taking the third position away from Mitchell. Rick Miller in the second spot in car 25. Two-time and defending champion, hoping to clinch his third straight track title tonight. And out in front, it's Brandon Manns. Manns last week scored a fifth place finish as he rocketed through the field in late race competition to earn that spot. He has won heat races this season. He has won top dog challenge races this season. Still seeking a first career feature victory as a sophomore driver in the division and he sees the white flag. The Spang remodeling Pride Mobility Products, Man's Home Medical Service, Ford Taurus number 15 out in front of this field. Every driver behind him in this race is a track championship winner but he has blown them away tonight to see the checkered flag and another top dog challenge dash victory for Mans. Abbott 32, Dan Jordan 9, Rick Broadwater 88, Hunkers, Harold Hunt, Bob Garchak in the 91, or in the 44 we should say, Robbie Hot in the 91. Three wide racing into turn number one. Brian Ship is inside a pair of the Kellers. 13 machine is driven by Denny Keller. The 11 is Victor Keller. And Ship is now the meat of a Keller sandwich with Tracy Keller just in front of him in third spot. While the 14 car of Noker gets sideways in turn four. Again he's sideways making contact with a championship contender of Tracy Keller while Brian Ship slips to the inside. Three wide for half a lap in the yellow book charger division. 14 car of Noker still a loose handling condition as he fights that car in the fourth position. In the third spot, it's the one of Tracy Keller. In second, the 04 of Brian Ship, And out in front with points on the line in the heat races, it's current championship standings leader Jeff Giles, the division's leading winner in car 50. More three wide action through this field. We have Keller family members in the 13 and the 11, respectively. Then it's Dan Jordan of Connellsville in the 32, and two-time feature winner Rick Broadwater in car number nine. Four cars battling for a top five position, working lap number three of this first Yellow Book Charger preliminary heat race event to go six laps in distance. We're halfway home. The four-car battle for fifth rages on with the 13 of Keller, the 32 of Jordan, the 11 of Keller, and the 9 of Broadwater. Nolker is by himself in fourth, then in front of him in third, it's Tracy Keller in car one. Last week's feature winner from Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania in car one is Tracy Keller, and he needs to gain ground on points leader Jeff Giles, Jr. Giles is running away from the field. It's Brian Ship in second in the 04, then out in front down the back straight and headed 
for his 10th preliminary heat race victory of the season. The 12-time feature winner and current points leader in the Yellow Book Charger division from Vanderbilt, Pennsylvania, Jeff Giles taking the checkered flag. Brian Shipp will hang on to the second spot over Tracy Keller. Jim Nolker fights the ill-handling car to fourth, and Dan Jordan grabs the fifth position. Adams outside, Dan Lewis in the eight, and Gary Wiltrout in the 60 make up row two. In row three, it's the 22 of Richard Mitchell and the 51 of John Messenger. Bobby Henry, second in the points, drives car number 11. The one is Steve Black. The 18 is Chad Hemphill. 33, John Komarinsky. 15, Brandon Manns. Out in front quickly, the Dunbar Dominator, Rick Miller in car 25. The Brooks Automotive Group, Pontiac Grand Prix. The driver who has won 12 heat races this season, distancing himself from Dan Lewis in car number 8, who's already feeling the pressure of eight-time feature winner Richard Mitchell. Mitchell, the former track champion from Brewston Mills, West Virginia tries to move under former pro truck racer Dan Lewis for second and he's bringing Bobby Henry along with him. Henry second in the points race coming into tonight in car 11. Bobby Henry a five time feature winner taking over the third spot from Lewis. Lewis in the eight car has led feature laps so far this season but seeks his first checkered flag as a late model driver and behind him the battle of Clarksburg West Virginia's John Messenger and Elizabeth Pennsylvania's Mike Adams. Messenger takes away the fifth position, working lap number three of ten. Behind him, Mike Adams and Gary Wiltrout, last week's feature winner in car 60. Dicing for the sixth position now. Adams, a former street stock feature winner here at the Speedway in his third year of late model competition, losing the sixth spot to 2001 late model champion Gary Wiltrout. Top five settling down just a bit now. Action behind this group, finding Adams losing another spot or two. Adams in the top ten in the point standings coming into tonight, having a tough heat race go as John Komarinsky moves around him in 33. And top dog challenge dash winner Brandon Manns steals a spot away as well. Up into the battle for fourth now. John Messenger into turn number three as the 51 car planted to the inside of the eight of Lewis and bringing Gary Wiltrout on with him out of turn four. We're working lap number six of ten, and West Virginia's Mr. Consistency, John Messenger, advances now into the fourth spot. That leaves Lewis and Wiltrout to battle for fifth. They are door-to-door -door down the back straight. Lewis of Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Wiltrout, a former Jennerstown and Motordrome track champion, to the inside and takes away fifth spot after starting deep in this field. Up front, a battle for the lead develops on the back straight. The two leading winners in the division going to fight in turn number three for the preliminary heat race win, Rick Miller in car 25. This season a six-time feature winner, an eight-time winner, Richard Mitchell, who grabs the lead by inches officially at the scoring line to begin working lap seven. Door to door down the back straight. Brewston Mills, West Virginia, Richard Mitchell in the Howard Concrete Pumping, Carvel Ice Cream Stores, Tom Clark, Chevrolet number 22, and the Valvoline Brooks Automotive Pontiac Grand Prix of Rick Miller. It's a three-car fight with the white flag waving on the final lap. Bobby Henry has closed in on this battle. Henry the five-time winner, Mitchell in 22 the eight-time winner, Miller the points leader and defending champion with six wins, headed to the checkered flag in turn four, door to door again. And at the checkered flag, it will be Rick Miller by inches with his 13th heat race win of the season. Champion Adam Kostelnik drives street stock number 05. And the 2005 track champion in car number 5 is Frank Turek as they go three wide for the lead at the drop of the green flag. Kostelnik and Cater split the Joe Hope 78 car. We got a problem. Burbage is climbing up the 78 machine. Body damage. The only result is everybody keeps pointed in the right direction. Joe Hope in the 78 and Rich Burbage in the 77 colliding. And the leaders are colliding out of turn four. Vince Cater with contact from Andrew Kostelnik. They're swapping paint all over the racetrack. The Subway Street Stock Division. Vince Cater in car four has yet to take a checkered flag this season. Kostelnik in 57 has a heat race win and a feature victory. The driver from North Braddock, Pennsylvania, the younger brother of our modified track champion, Adam Kostelnik. The 57 car now diving to the inside in turn four. This is where they made contact last lap and officially now on lap two of eight. Kostelnik, your leader over Cater. All by himself in third, it's Rich Burbage in the 77. Then Smithton's own Lonnie Hoffman in 73. He's feeling the pressure from the 0-5 in only his third start of the year in a street stock. Modified champion Adam Kostelnik. Frank Turek. 
moving in to join that fight. Lonnie Hoffman in 73, Frank Turek in five, the leading division winner. Turek has 16 heat race wins and 10 feature victories in car five. The Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania driver now moves into the sole possession of fifth spot in car five. Then it's the 0-5, which is being scored as 85 here tonight. That's the street stock ride of Adam Kostelnik, who's going to challenge Rich Burbage. Burbage of Newcastle, Pennsylvania in car 77. Top 10 in the point standings coming into tonight. And a problem for Kostelnik as he made light contact with Burbage and may have broken something in the front suspension of the 85 car. Up front, Andrew Kostelnik. Still your leader with five of eight laps completed. Vince Cater, the veteran in car four, riding in the second spot. With Adam Kostelnik now off the racetrack, the battle for third intensifies as Frank Turek in the five is alongside the 77 of Burbage. Turek, last week's feature winner, started deep in this field and takes third position away from Burbage. Best battle on the speedway will be that for the lead as Andrew Kostelnik hoping to get a second heat race victory in his street stock career. Vince Cater in the four car, having not seen a checkered flag all season at one of his best runs last week. With the white flag in the air, it's the final lap. A pair of Chevrolet Monte Carlos in the Subway Street Stock Division will slug it out down the back straight for the heat race victory. Kostelnik from North Braddock, Pennsylvania in car 57. And the four of Vince Cater from New Stanton. They are closing the gap, but it will be Andrew Kostelnik with another heat race win over Cater. Frank Turek in third, Rich Burbage in fourth, and Lonnie Hoffman completing the top five. Drives the 15 car. Bill Henry in 64 at his best career week of racing last Friday. Robin Rimmel, a two-time feature winner in car 22, as the green flag waves for another eight laps of Subway Street Stock action. Tavermina taking the second position, and they're three wide behind him. Ashton, the meat of the sandwich, the 31 of Phillips, backs off and allows Bill Henry to challenge in 64 to the outside of Ashton. Early leader Jason Holder, Tavermina in second, and then look at this battle in turn number one for the third spot. Bill Henry, a two-time heat race winner in car 64, holding off feature winner this season, Bill Ashton in the 35. Sean Phillips is the 31 car. He is riding in the fifth position right now, and a challenge develops for the lead in turn four. Jason Holder gets a light tap from the hammer, Dave Tavermina. So far this season in car 25, Dave Tavermina has four feature wins and nine heat race wins. Jason Holder in car number 74, meanwhile, one feature victory to his credit this season. Henry dirt tracking the car out of turn four. That's the 64 machine in third, up to challenge Holder. Then we see Ashton in 35 and Phillips in 31. Jonathan Heilman, the 15 car, joins that battle. But up in front of these cars, the second place battle gets heated. Tavermina, your leader, all by himself now, distancing himself from Bill Henry in 64, Jason Holder in 74. Holder spent much of the early part of this season in the second spot in the point standings after a feature win and two heat race victories, then had some bad luck, some crashes not of his own fault, which eliminated him from championship contention. And now Bill Henry in the 64 has been one of the hottest drivers in the last couple weeks of Subway Street Stock Racing. Henry, twice a heat race winner this season, including last week, was the runner-up in last week's feature event to champion Frank Turek, getting a career-high second-place finish. He's now second in this preliminary heat race on lap five of eight. Jason Holder in the third spot, then a battle for fourth behind them. Waynesburg's Sean Phillips in car 31, and the 35 of Bill Ashton. Ashton has won a feature this season. Phillips has only finished outside the top five in his feature one time in his starts at Motordrome this season. Then it's Jonathan Heilman in car number 15. He's a two-time heat race winner in 2005. White flag in the air. Dave Tavermina leading the 64 of Bill Henry. For Tavermina, the driver from Wilmerding, Pennsylvania, a breakout season as he got his first career win about midway through this year. He's gone on to win three more, including the Subway 25 special event. 
And now for the ninth time this season, the checkered flag waves in a preliminary heat win for Dave Tavermina. Bill Henry comes home in the second spot, Jason Holder third, Sean Phillips fourth, and Bill Ashton fifth. The 60 is track champion Adam Kostelnik, and the five car is Jim Nicola as the green flag waves for eight laps of Smail Pontiac GMC modified heat racing. Glemba and Nicola staging a fight for the point position right now. Nicola second in the championship point standings. Glemba fourth in the championship title fight. Adam Kostelnik in car 60 has already clinched the championship. He's working on the 11 of John Probanich to the outside for third position. Drivers in second, third, and fourth in the modified point standings separated by only a handful of markers. And these heat races could play into top five positions. The season standings with Bo Glemba of Charleroi, the early leader. Working lap number two of eight. They are stacking up behind him. Harry Opfer joins the battle. The Bell Vernon driver in car 01 makes a surprise challenge on the track champion. Up in front of them, however, John Probanich in car 11 from East McKeesport. One of the hottest drivers the last six weeks. Shoehorns his way beneath George Nicola and takes away the runner-up spot in car number 11. Probanich seeks his career first victory while the cars surrounding him have all been to victory lane including leader and sophomore driver Bo Glemba in car 99 who got his first career win earlier this summer. Kostelnik in car 60 challenging for second not only the track points champion this season but the leading feature winner having won seven times. Kostelnik in the 60 car has 13 heat race wins while John Probanich in the 11 is a four-time heat race winner. This battle for second, the best on the racetrack, wheel to wheel in turn three, headed to turn number four. At the scoring line, officially by half a car length, working lap number five, Adam Kostelnik is the new runner-up. Now George Nicola in the 97, the runner-up currently in the point standings, looking to make a move on John Probanich for the third position. Bo Glemba, the leader. With two laps remaining, Kostelnik in second in car 60, Probanich in third in the 11, then it's Nicola, and how about Harry Opfer in the 0-1? Opfer has not taken a checkered flag this season. He's 11th in the point standings, but is having a fantastic heat race run here, hanging on to the fifth position. White flag in the air for the 99 of Bo Glemba from Charleroi, Pennsylvania. Glemba, who finished in the top five almost exclusively in the first half of the season, finally Got that first career feature win after finishing 10th in last year's point standings. He comes into tonight fourth in the standings. He's got that big career first feature win, and now he has three preliminary heat race victories, taking the checkered flag over Adam Kostelnik, John Probanich, George Nicola, and Harry Opfer. Last Friday night in car six, then it's Rick Huffman in the nine, and Matt Panaya in car 32, who's currently fifth in the modified point standings. Here's the green flag for another eight lap open wheel warrior shootout. Smail Pontiac GMC Modifieds on the speedway with Bob Ship, the rookie in the class, taking over the lead from Rich Nicola, who races street stocks at Jennerstown Speedway on Saturday nights. Jumps into his brother's backup machine, currently second on the racetrack with Mike Bacalon closing quickly in car 98. Bacalon this season has four preliminary heat race wins and three feature victories. Then it's Tom Frank, the youngster from Ohio, who has Matt Smith, the veteran in car three, moving to his inside. Astonishingly, Smith not winning a feature event in 2005 to this point of the season. Smith has three heat race wins and has been one of the top competitors for years in this division. Has not gone to victory lane after a feature in 2005. Meanwhile, Bacalon challenges for second. He's to the inside of Rich Nicola. Bacalon won the Smale 25, the longest distance event this season for the Modifieds, as one of his three feature victories in the Froggy-sponsored number 98 machine. Matt Smith now wheel-to-wheel -wheel with Nicola, taking away third spot in the nuclear banana car number three. Smith about to challenge Bacalon, pulls right up to the back bumper in a pair of yellow cars slugging it out for second. Four laps down, four laps to go. Halfway through the second Smale Pontiac GMC modified heat race tonight. Battle behind them is the 51 of Nicola, the 6 of Tom Frank. 
Tom Frank, the young driver from Ohio who now has a heat race win and two straight top five finishes in feature competition as a rookie here at Motordrome. Matt Smith, meanwhile, challenging just in front of these cars and taking away the second spot from Bacalon. Smith, who has yet to win a feature, looking very strong in this heat race tonight. Driver from New Eagle, Pennsylvania, whose career has included much dirt track racing as well as asphalt competition in car number three, up to the second spot. Last season, Smith finished in the fifth spot in the point standings. Some absences this year have dropped him outside of the top ten in the championship chase. And out in front of him with a big lead now in turns three and four. How about Bob Ship, the modified rookie, who will see the white flag in car 04? At midseason, a devastating crash launched his modified airborne and destroyed the car. This new machine has been very fast since he debuted it. The driver from Elizabeth, Pennsylvania, already has two preliminary heat race wins in his rookie season. And as the defending Charger Division champion, about to make it three preliminary wins in the quest for a first feature win, Bob Ship sees the checkered flag. Matt Smith in second, Mike Bacall on third, Rich Nicola hangs on to fourth over Tom Frank in fifth. Roger Bryan in 12, Bill Oldham in 5, Kevin Ludwig in 51, Gene Greco 22, and points leader Ed Deneen starting last in car 16. Deneen has just about clinched the championship in car 16. All he had to do was start this heat race to lock up the championship title, which he does from the rear of the field. Up front, meanwhile, we see a battle for the second spot with the 34 of Minjock, a one-time feature winner, and five-time winner, rookie Richie Miller in 87, door-to-door -door for the second position behind another one-time feature winner, Matt Gardner in car seven out in front. Minjock and Miller, a pair of Chevy Cavaliers dueling for position. Bill Oldham is the five car from Connellsville closing in on that battle for the runner-up spot. Miller is second in the point standings as a rookie at 21 years of age in the four-cylinder front-wheel drive amateur Advance Auto Parts American Flyers. This preliminary heat race for the Advance Auto Parts American Flyers, five laps in distance. We're working lap number two. Feature tonight, this evening, for the Advance Auto Parts American Flyers will be eight laps in distance as... Minjock in second, Miller in third, and leader Matt Gardner. Gardner, who won a feature in only his fifth start, flying the Mopar colors proudly in that Dodge Daytona. He won his heat race and feature race on the same night, marking a career high for him as a rookie to the division with only about a half season of experience. As a matter of fact, it was Gardner's second heat race win on the night that he won his feature. Minjock in the 34 car with the white flag waving, is running in the second position. Minjok, in addition to that feature victory, has two preliminary heat race wins. But out in front with a comfortable margin down the back straightaway in car number seven. Driver who visited victory lane just a few weeks ago for the very first time from Ruffsdale, Pennsylvania. Matt Gardner with another preliminary heat race win over Aaron Minjok, Richie Miller, Bill Oldham, and coming home in the fifth spot, it'll be Gene Greco in car 22. Roger Bryan of Smithton, Pennsylvania, the hometown hero, loses the left front wheel. And from here, that wheel just might make it back to his home on the other side of 70 as the Smithton driver suffers a tough break at the drop of the checkered flag. Best time for it to happen is after you cross the finish line, and that's what happened to Roger in car number 12, the Advance Auto Parts American Flyers. For tonight's Napa NASCAR Super Late Model feature, starting from the pole from Clarksburg, West Virginia, the Advance Auto Parts Dare Chevrolet Monte Carlo number 51 is John Messenger. Starting second, the Pro Truck feature winner earlier this season, now moving up to the NASCAR Super Late Models from Greensburg, Pennsylvania in car 8, Dan Lewis. Next, from North Huntington, Pennsylvania, the top dog challenge winner tonight, fourth in the point standings, the Man's Home Medical Service, Spang remodeling Ford Taurus, number 15 of Brandon Manns. Starting in row three, from Greensburg, Pennsylvania, the Beckwith Machinery Company, Toyota Lift Trucks, Ford Taurus, number one, for Steve Black. Next, we find rookie Chad Hemphill, driving the Coors Light, number 18 car. He is the uncle of NASCAR Bush Series driver, Ryan Hemphill. Next, we find Mike Adams, 10th in the point standings, looking to move up to 9th tonight in the Blue Flame Restaurant Monte Carlo, number 43, from Elizabeth. 
Bobby Henry from Connellsville drives the Lint Flooring Stone End Company Megan Ford Taurus number 11 as a five-time feature winner, second in the point standings. Then it's Greensburg, Pennsylvania veteran John Komarinski in the Rolling Rock Chevrolet number 33. Next row finds the two biggest winners of the season, Rick Miller, the defending track champion and points leader in the Valvoline Brooks Automotive Group, Bellevue Chassis Pontiac, starting outside of him in car 22, Richard Mitchell, the Howard Concrete Pumping, Tom Clark Chevrolet, and starting scratch last week's feature winner from Somerset, Pennsylvania, in the lint flooring, Bentz Motorsports, Stands Transmissions, number 60, Gary Wiltrout. There's the green flag, we're underway. Top five cars on the speedway have never won a feature in motor drone competition. John Messenger, the early leader, the West Virginian in car 51. He is fifth in the current point standings and closing in quickly, sophomore driver Brandon Manns, both of whom are seeking their career first win along with Dan Lewis in third. Henry, the second driver in the point standings, fourth on the speedway right now. Behind him, some action happening as Chad Hemphill drops some three positions to a trio of former track champions, Rick Miller, Gary Wiltrout, and Richard Mitchell. Wiltrout started scratch in the field and is already challenging. The points leader, Rick Miller, in car 60. Wiltrout in 60, Miller in 25, Mitchell in 22, as we see a lead battle developing. Drivers who are likely bets to win a first feature in 2006, if not tonight, up front in this field, the 51 of John Messenger. Last season, Messenger came home in the fourth position in the final point standings as Mitchell takes away the fifth position from Wiltrout in car 60. It's now a three car fight at the lead. Up front, Messenger holds on to the point position while Manns is challenging to the outside. Bobby Henry has pulled up to the inside of Messenger. Working lap four of 35, John Messenger has led all four of the first laps. Brandon Manns in car 15, having a banner season as a sophomore driver, and Bobby Henry with more than 100 feature wins in his career, making it a three-car fight for the lead, nearly three wide. Into turn number one, Messenger, the meat of the sandwich, as Manns backs off. Feels like he's going to tuck in behind safely with Messenger while Bobby Henry battles to the inside. Henry was a championship contender at the start of the night. He has got to do everything in his power to gain a significant number of points tonight on Miller, while Richard Mitchell has gained spots in a big way. Richard Mitchell has passed Messenger, passed Manns, and is challenging Bobby Henry for the win on lap five. Starting near the rear of this field, Richard Mitchell and mid-pack starting Bobby Henry are door-to-door -door in turn four in the final night of racing at Motordrome. West Virginia's Richard Mitchell, a two-time former track champion at Motordrome and former NASCAR Northeast Region champion, takes the Tom Clark Chevrolet to the front, moving the Ford Taurus of Bobby Henry, the Will Trout Racing Stone and Company Lint Flooring sponsored machine back to second. Henry a five-time winner this season, Mitchell an eight-time winner, and they have distanced themselves already from Brandon Manns in third, who has now taken a position away from early race leader John Messenger. working lap number nine of 35. Battle on the speedway between the 33 of John Komarinski and the 60 of last week's winner, Gary Wiltrout. Wiltrout, who is the owner of Bobby Henry's car and the driver of this Bentz Motorsports Chevrolet number 60, which is sponsored by Cintas Uniform, Stan's Transmissions, and Stone and Company. He's got a problem as we're talking about him. The Napa 100 winner rolls to a stop in turn four, allowing Komarinski to take the position and bringing out the caution flag on lap 11. It's night at Motor Drome Speedway. Richard Mitchell, Bobby Henry, Brandon Mance, John Messenger lead him to the green flag. Top two drivers on the speedway, Mitchell in 22 and Henry in 11. Both winners at Motordrome Speedway and Jennerstown Speedway in their careers. Henry, the most veteran of the two, as he has been competing here at Motordrome since the pavement covered the dirt track surface back in 1990. And Mitchell having a mechanical problem up front. Sparks from the leader's machine. 
the eight-time winner, Richard Mitchell, pulls out of the way and hands the lead to Bobby Henry with a serious rear end problem in car 22. Rick Miller moves by. Mitchell back to sixth and slowing. Will Trout returned to the track for competition while Mitchell falls out while leading on lap 12. Bobby Henry up front all by himself and Brandon Manns now into the second position. Manns in search of his first career feature victory. Won the top dog challenge dash earlier tonight. The driver of car number 15, a winning pro truck racer. And last season as a late model rookie, the teammate to champion Rick Miller. His entire team makes the leap to late model competition as a rookie team with a sophomore driver. And so far this season, he has two heat race wins, two top dog challenge wins, and is going to have to fight with West Virginia's John Messenger to maintain second position. The 51 of Messenger, a dirt track limited late model ace who made the switch to pavement late models a few seasons ago. Last year, he was the highest finishing driver in the point standings who did not win a feature, and he, like Manns, seeks his first checkered flag. That's Rick Miller, defending track champion, now looking to take third away from his teammate from a year ago, Brandon Manns. Miller up to third, Messenger in second, and Bobby Henry with nearly a straightaway advantage in car number 11. Manns is off the pace in turn two. After fighting for top five positions down the back straight, the man's home medical Ford Taurus having a mechanical problem. With Manns off the pace, that moves John Komarinski in 33 up into the fourth position. And with all this attrition, cars falling out, Gary Wiltrout in 60 is back up to a top five spot after a lengthy pit stop. It's a broken sway bar, the culprit for early leader Richard Mitchell, Brandon Manns with perhaps an engine failure, and the battle we're watching is for second with John Messenger and Rick Miller in car 25. Miller this season a six-time feature winner. The most dominant heat race winner and possible track champion. If the Valvoline Brooks Automotive Group 25 car can maintain this position or higher, he's challenging John Messenger for second, Messenger was an ace and champion in dirt track limited late models in his home state of West Virginia at tracks like Interstate 79, Tyler County, and Elkins. And now as a Motor Drome Speedway NASCAR late model competitor, coming into tonight, he was fifth in the standings and is likely to move up to fourth as Brandon Manns falls out with mechanical problems. We're working lap 21 of 35. The best battle on the track is for second with two-time track champion Rick Miller challenging Mr. Consistency John Messenger in the 51. Mike Adams in car 43 looking to move up tonight as well as he is 10th in the point standings looking to move into 9th. Just in front of Adams on the speedway it's Dan Lewis in car 8 who started up front the pro truck division graduate. In front of him we find the 60 that's 5th place running Gary Wiltrout the former champion who pitted and now headed into turn 3 has moved himself back into the top 5 with help of top 5 cars falling out. In 4th how about John Komarinski the Rolling Rock 33 having a stellar run. Then it's third and second in the middle of the back straight, and they are waging a war for the runner-up position. Door to door for several laps, John Messenger and Rick Miller. Miller in the high side, car number 25 now has completed by just a little more than a car length his pass for second, while Messenger battles back to his inside. John Messenger in 51, Rick Miller in 25. On lap 26 now, Miller in possession of second position on the racetrack. As the points leader, he would certainly lock up the track title his third in a row with Bobby Henry, the man he is being challenged by in the standings, just about a straightaway ahead of this battle for second in leading tonight's feature on the last night at Motordrome Speedway for Napa NASCAR Super Late Models. Turn to a spin by Steve Black. Event of the season, there's the green flag for Henry, Miller, Messenger, and Komarinski.
last week, Bobby Henry spun from a top five position while advancing through the feature grid. So far this season in turn two, Henry has had a couple of spins, but consistent enough finishes and enough feature victories to make him the second man in the championship points chase to Rick Miller in car 25. The interval only about eight, nine car lengths. If Miller finishes second, he will easily notch his third title. Henry needed to win the heat, win the feature, and hope that Miller barely completed a lap in order to challenge seriously for the track title in 2005. He could, with a victory tonight, tie Miller for second on the feature wins list with six each as John Messenger watches this battle from third in car 51. Five laps to go in the 2005 racing season for the Napa NASCAR Super Late Models. Behind Messenger in fourth, an outstanding performance by veteran John Komarinsky, the Rolling Rock Monte Carlo number 33. Komarinsky has raced in street stocks, trucks, and late models in his career at Motor Drome Speedway. Seeking a career first late model victory, he's fourth on the speedway. Behind him, Gary Wiltrout has battled back to fifth after the early race pit stop. In front of Messengers 51, it's points leader Rick Miller, the Valvoline Bellevue Chassis Center, Brooks Automotive Group sponsored Pontiac Grand Prix. And with two laps to go in front of him, the Ford Taurus of Bobby Henry. Henry, the driver from Connellsville, Pennsylvania, who is second in the point standings and has a margin right now of about six or eight car lengths over the 25 of Miller. White flag in the air this time around, Bobby Henry with more than 100 feature victories, including the 2004 Napa 100. That was his first win of 2004 as he drove for Alborn Motorsports, and in his first year driving the Wiltrout Racing car number 11, Henry, out of turn number four, will win his sixth feature of the season. Track champion Rick Miller finishes second, John Messenger in third, John Komarinsky in fourth, and Gary Wiltrout in fifth. take an opportunity to get a word and a photo from some of our divisional track champions including Frank Turek and Subway Street Stock number five who's parked his machine here on the front straight. Adam Kostelnik who already locked up his title a couple of weeks ago in modified number 60. And then two drivers who we anticipate sealing up their championship by taking the green flag in the feature events tonight. Jeff Giles in Yellow Book Charger number 50 and Ed Deneen in the Advanced Auto Parts American Flyers number 16 car. Miller, who just placed second in that feature event, and Rick, a third consecutive track championship for you here at Motor Drum Speedway, something that you wanted from night number one here. Yeah, something we've been working for, and, uh, you know, the crew did a heck of a job, you know. Uh, the car never fails, it just keeps on running, and, um, you know, that's all I can think of. I can't thank the crew enough for the job they do on the car week in and week out to give me such a great running car, so it's all, it's all their, you know, their deal. We remember an earlier season race where you did something in a heat race. You said, we lifted just a little bit in the heat race to preserve this car to make sure we had a championship run intact. And I don't believe you've had a DNF all season long through smart racing and hard pit crew work. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the cars have been um, unfaltering all year. We've, you know, we've not DNF'd at all, at all this year. So you know, that's, the, I guess, the mark of a championship team when you can run all season long, especially with the rainouts you know, that we haven't had this year and like previous years. So, uh, yeah, it's just an um, amazing feat. Driver of the Valvoline Brooks Automotive Group Pontiac Grand Prix and now three-time Motodrome champion Rick Miller from Dunbar, Pennsylvania. Kostelnik from East McKeesport, the 2005 Smale Pontiac GMC Modified Division Champion. From Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania, the driver of Subway Street Stock number five. From Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania, Frank Turek. From Wilkinsburg, Pennsylvania, driver of the Advance Auto Parts, American Flyers number 16, Ed Deneen. Yellow Book Charger Division Champion. From Vanderbilt, Pennsylvania, driving car number 50, Jeff Giles Jr. And three-time Napa NASCAR Super Late Model Division Champion from Dunbar, Pennsylvania, Rick Miller.
From Vanderbilt, Pennsylvania, the division's leading winner in car number 50, starting from the pole, is Jeff Giles, Jr. Outside of him driving car number 11, it's Victor Keller from Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania. Row number two, we find Dan Jordan from Connellsville in car 32. And outside of him, Bob Ship. I'm sorry, that's Brian Ship in the 04 from Jefferson Hills, Pennsylvania. Driver of car number 13 is Denny Keller from Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania. The driver of car 14 is Jim Nolker from Butler. The 9 is a two-time feature winner from Level Green, Pennsylvania, Rick Broadwater. And the Ludwig Racing car number 51 is driven by Cliff Abbott from Periopolis, Pennsylvania. The big brown car. Number 88 is Hunkers, Harold Hunt. And outside of him, a rookie to the division in 91, Robbie Hott. Bob Garchak of Pittsburgh drives car 44. And the man second in the point standing starts last tonight. Tracy Keller from Mount Pleasant, last week's feature winner in car number one. Here's the green flag, and Jeff Giles has all but locked up the championship in the division in car 50. He starts from the pole as the leading division winner. Battle for second finds Dan Jordan and the 11 machine of Victor Keller. Victor Keller, the brother of Tracy Keller, who's starting last. Dan Jordan in car 32, yet to see a checkered flag in the division. Jordan challenging for the runner-up spot. Side-by-side -side action all over the racetrack. Rick Broadwater to the outside of Jim Nolker. In the 14, they make contact in turn one. 14 of Nolker, dirt tracking the car and still unable to gather it back in. Brian Ship gets by him while he lets Rick Broadwater get away. And here comes Tracy Keller in the one. Just in front of this battle, we see Rick Broadwater in the nine. And headed into turn number one, he is right there with the 13 machine, driven by Denny Keller. Denny is the cousin of second place points man Tracy Keller. And Brian Ship squirts by him as well. Brian Ship with two sudden bursts, taking away positions from Nolker and from Keller. Nolker in car 14 drifting up the banking just a bit. This is a mid-pack battle with Tracy Keller in the one last week's feature winner. And then the 13 machine of Denny Keller just in front of him. The 04 of Brian Ship, the 9 of Rick Broadwater. And then we reach the cars in the top five positions like the 32 of Dan Jordan moving around the slower 44 of Bob Garchak. Jordan now all by himself in third spot. Then in front of him we find the 11 car driven by Victor Keller. This is the car that Tracy Keller won with on opening night, number 11, riding in the second spot. And just as he has done all season long, Jeff Giles Jr. is blowing away the field in car number 50. That's Chevrolet Monte Carlo on the back straight on lap number 6 of 15. Has won more features than anyone else in this division with 12 feature victories. He also has nine preliminary heat race wins. Last season, he was third in the final point standings without a victory. And this a breakout season for the driver from Vanderbilt, PA, as he is definitely headed for a track championship in the Yellow Book Charger division. In turns three and four, best battle on the racetrack. The 14 of Jim Nolker and the 13 car of Denny Keller. Keller taking that position away. Working lap number nine now of 15. 
Plenty of open racetrack there between the 13 machine of Denny Keller and the one of Tracy Keller, who's second in the point standings with two victories. Then a battle between the 04 of Brian Ship and the 9 of Rick Broadwater. Broadwater fourth, Ship in fifth. Brian Ship, the younger brother of last year's Charger Division champion, Bob Ship, who's now a modified racer. Ship from Jefferson Hills, Broadwater in the nine from Level Green, Pennsylvania. Broadwater's Oldsmobile leading Ship's Monte Carlo. Working lap number 11 of 15 down the back straight. Just in front of them, the 32 of Dan Jordan, who holds down the third position. Then the 11 of Victor Keller. Victor Keller's number 11 car was yellow here on opening day when it went to victory lane at the hands of Tracy Keller, the man second in the point standings coming into tonight. With two laps to go, leader Jeff Giles Jr. is all by himself. Car number 50 is in a separate zip code from the rest of the competitors here tonight. Vanderbilt, Pennsylvania's Jeff Giles Jr. never won a feature event until 2005 and he could be headed for his 13th of the season en route to the track championship in the Yellow Book Chargers. White flag is waving, final lap around. The race car is for sale. He is hoping to move into a modified for the 2006 racing season. On opening night, Tracy Keller was the winner, and from that night on, Jeff Giles Jr. has been the dominant force in the division, allowing only two others to win since his first victory, and career win 13 seals up the Yellow Book Charger Championship for Jeff Giles Jr. of Vanderbilt, Pennsylvania, coming home in the second spot. It's the 11 of Victor Keller. Third, it's Dan Jordan in 32. Fourth, Brian Ship, And fifth to Rick Broadwater in car nine. And with yet another feature victory in his championship winning season from Vanderbilt, Pennsylvania, the driver of Chevrolet Monte Carlo, number 50. In just a moment, we'll give him a champion's round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Giles, Jr. With a possible threat of impending weather, we're going to keep this Victory Lane interview very, very brief. We have a Subway gift certificate for you from our good friends. Jeff, how about a word about this championship winning season? Yeah, it's been a good season. We've had a lot of luck. We only DNF two times, and I think that was our main thing, because last year I think we DNF 10. So this, just staying up front every week, and we won 12 features now, so that's definitely a help too. And a chance to thank your sponsors and crew on the championship title. I'd like to thank Universal Ready Mix, Giles Towing Service, Hodge Transmission, Westside Lube and Tire, um, Brooks's Automotive Group, Painter's Choice, Westview's Appliances, and thank Dave Miller and Bellevue Chassis also. Hope to see him back in 2006, perhaps in another division. Jeff Giles Jr. from Vanderbilt. <laughs> Town in car 74, Jason Holder. Outside from Newcastle, Pennsylvania, car number 77 is Rich Burbage. Driving car number four, veteran Vince Cater, who had that stellar run in his heat race. Outside of him from Waynesburg, Pennsylvania, car number 31, it's Sean Phillips. Moving back one row, it's the 35 of feature winner Bill Ashton from Hopwood. Outside of him, Andrew Kostelnik from North Braddock, another feature winner. Lonnie Hoffman from right here in Smithton drives car 73. Vandergriff, Pennsylvania's Bill Henry drives 64. Dave Tavermina. The Subway Challenge driver in car 25 to the inside of division champion Frank Turek in the 5. Joe Holp drives 78. Jonathan Heilman in 15. Adam Kostelnik in the 85. Robin Rimmel in 22. Jamie Shipley in 68 as we're green and racing. Three and four wide on the back straight. Up front, it's Jason Holder. Then it's Rich Burbage side-by-side side with Sean Phillips. Action happening all over the racetrack in the early laps. It's Vince Cater and Bill Ashton in tow. Lonnie Hoffman gets two wheels off the pavement in turns one and two. Up front, Sean Phillips breaks free of his battle for second. Looking to close in on Jason Holder. 
Holder, who won a feature early in 2005. Phillips, who's only finished outside the top five once all season. Then Rich Burbage in 77, Vince Cater in four. Here comes Subway Challenge driver Dave Tavermina in car 25. He moves underneath the 35 of Bill Ashton, taking over the fifth position, right on the back bumper of Vince Cater in car four. They make light contact in turn number four, and Tavermina may be pushing him down the front straight. Vince Cater in the four may be being held up by Rich Burbage in the 77. Ashton makes light contact with Tavermina, and the battle for third intensifies now with the four of Cater looking inside of the 77 of Rich Burbage. Door-to-door -door racing in turn four. Burbage up about one lane higher than he would have liked to have been. That allows Cater into the position in car four, and Tavermina in a shower of sparks takes over fourth. Lead battle intensifies just in front of these drivers as Tavermina looks to the inside of the four of Cater. Leaders making contact in turn four. Holder in the 74. Sean Phillips in 31. Jason Holder of Stoystown, Pennsylvania, earlier this season, won a Subway Challenge for everybody in attendance. That was his only feature victory of 2005 as Sean Phillips in car 31 takes over the second position early in this event and is challenging for a first career street stock victory. Tavermina's up to third after starting deep in the field. Meatball Submarine fans are getting excited at the thought of Dave Tavermina winning this Subway Street Stock Challenge tonight. Action settles down at the front. Back in the battle for fifth position now headed into turn three. Behind Vince Cater, it's Ashton in 35. Champion Frank Turek in the five, both moving past Rich Burbage. Frank Turek now in car number five, threatening for a top five spot as Ashton currently fifth and Turek in sixth. Turek started near the back with Tavermina. In car number five, looking below Ashton, Turek this season, the 10-time feature winner, door-to-door -door with Ashton, working on lap number 7 of 15. Sorry. Up front, Dave Tavermina is challenging Sean Phillips. Tavermina dives to the inside, takes away second spot. Again, a shower of sparks as he bottoms out. Car number 25, they play bumper tag down the back straight. We got a caution, turn two, there's big trouble with several cars involved. Andrew Kostelnik has stopped on the racetrack. Bill Henry has spun to the inside wall. Adam Kostelnik involved in the same incident as his brother and Robin Rimmel in the 22 car. Adam Kostelnik addressing his brother, Andrew as Andrew continues on in the 57, and Adam, our modified champion, in a rare street stock start here. Part of that problem, while Bill Henry pulls the 64 car away from the apron of the racetrack where he was involved in this incident. 2005, Jason Holder in 74 over Dave Tavermina, Sean Phillips, Vince Cater, and Frank Turek, another man on the move. Tavermina's third in the point standings coming into tonight and second on the racetrack. Holder, your leader is fourth in the championship standings. Holder got his first career Motor Drome win in late summer of 2004. Picked up one this season as well. Tavermina, first career win was this year, and he's backed it up with three more. He's officially the leader at the halfway mark. Ten down, ten to go. Tavermina, the Subway Challenge driver, takes over the point position from Jason Holder. Starting deep in the field, Frank Turek in car number five, making his way to the front, now third on the racetrack and closing on second place rider, Jason Holder. Turek in car five, the two-time consecutive champion. Also the 1998 Subway Street Stock champion. Looking to make it 11 victories as he takes second position from Holder, He's got to make up about eight or ten car lengths on leader the hammer, Dave Tavermina. Twelve laps now completed of 20. Turek is into the second spot, and now Phillips is going to challenge Holder for third. Sean Phillips of Waynesburg in car 31. As Andrew Kostelnik's car rolls back into the pit area after the caution flag incident. 
Phillips, who didn't begin to race at Motordrome until after the midway point of the season. In all of his first events of competition, he finished in the top five, and to this point on our last night of racing only has one finish lower than fifth this season. Jason Holder now losing positions in a big way after leading the early stages of this event. We have a caution. Jonathan Heilman in turn four. 15 car of Heilman driving through the grass in turn four, stopped briefly at the inside retaining wall, and did appear to make contact with that wall as the 15 car rolls along now with 13 of 20 laps completed. Tavermina still with an early start and opens up a six or seven car length advantage over Turek. Tavermina won the 25 lap Subway Special Event as part of his four victory season to this point. Frank Turek with 10 wins and a third career track championship in 2005. Behind them, a strong battle for third position, Sean Phillips in 31. Jason Holder in 74, nearly swapping pain in turn number one. Only six laps remaining in that door-to-door -door battle, heads down the back straight. Third position on the line, Sean Phillips in 31, Jason Holder in 74. We told you Sean Phillips has performed outstanding, only racing about half the season. He's up to 12th in the point standings when he didn't make a start much before July here at Motordrome Speedway. In just half a season, he's advanced himself to 12th in the standings. Holder, who falls back to 4th on the racetrack, coming into tonight was 4th in the championship chase. Then it's Vince Cater in the 4, Bill Ashton in the 35. Ashton got his second career victory earlier this season. Into turn number three, the lead battle is starting to develop with track champion Frank Turek, only about three car lengths away from the hammer, Dave Tavermina. Three laps to go. It's Phillips hanging on to third by a car length, Holder back to fourth, and that time Tavermina got a bit of an advantage over Turek out of turn two. As the leaders hit the front straightaway for the two-lap to go signal, Tavermina's opened up seven, eight car lengths advantage. Meatball submarine fans, get your ticket stubs ready to visit a nearby subway. Dave Tavermina has two laps until he will earn a free six-inch meatball sub for everybody at Motor Drome Speedway. Frank Turek, the track champion, four, five, maybe six car lengths behind at the wave of the white flag. Tavermina from Wilmer Ding, Pennsylvania, a four-time winner this season, has climbed himself into the third spot in the point standings after a near disastrous start to the 2005 season. He was involved in crashes, disqualified, DNFs, but has rebounded for an outstanding second half of the year. And Dave Tavermina wins the Subway Challenge. Frank Turek comes home in the second spot. Sean Phillips into third, Bill Ashton advancing to fourth, and Jason Holder fifth. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a round of applause for Dave Tavermina. Dave Tavermina, we have a Subway gift certificate for you. Now I'm going to tell you something about your career tonight. You've made fans all season long with your hard charging driving style. Tonight, you just won a free six inch meatball sub for everybody in the place, courtesy of Subway, for winning the Subway Challenge. Hey, that's great news. I'm glad I could help everybody out, and uh, it was my pleasure to do it. It's a hard fart race. I come from ninth, and boy, I tell you, I looked up on the board and uh, seen Frank coming. I knew we were going to have a race at the end, but uh, I think he was a little tight, so was I. But it was a great, exciting race, a great season. Boy, that restart, you got a heck of a jump, opened up five or six car lengths right on the spot there. Do you have a decision to make when there's a restart, and do you want to start early, do you want to start late, and how do you think Frank reacts to that? I always try to get the guy to suck up and give me a little bump. I know where he's at, <laughs> then I take off on him. <laughs> well, it worked tonight for your fifth feature win. He wins the Subway Street Stock Challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Taver, Dave Tavermina. Second and third drivers in the point standings of Nicola and Bacalon. It's car number 11 from East McKeesport, John Prabanich. And then we find division rookie Bob Ship in the 04, starting to the inside of Bell Vernon's Harry Opfer in the 01. New Eagle, Pennsylvania's Matt Smith drives car number three. 
Then we find the Al Civic 94.3 machine. Outside of him, Bo Glemba, driver of car number 99, comes into tonight in the fifth position in the point standings. Behind Glemba, we see the 51 car. That's the Jim Nicola backup machine driven by Rich Nicola. And 2005 modified champion Adam Kostelnik from East McKeesport in car number 60. Teenage rookie Tom Frank, the Ohio driver, drives the car at number 6. Then it's Matt Panaya in car 32 from Plum Arrow, Pennsylvania. The 5 is Jim Nicola from Pittsburgh, a former champion. And the 9 is Rick Huffman. Smail, Pontiac GMC Grand Prix pace car onto pit lane. And we are green and racing 20 laps for the open wheel warriors of the Smail Pontiac GMC modified division. Side by side, up front, Mike Bacalon in car number 98. Bacalon in the third position in the point standings, only one point behind George Nicola in car 97 and one of them will be the early leader. It's Nicola by inches on lap number one with John Probanich in car 11 challenging for a first career feature victory. Second place in the championship standings is on the line with only one point separating the drivers first and second coming into tonight's racing action. Nicola to the inside will also lead number two again by inches over Mike Bacalon. Nicola, the four-time feature winner. Bacalon, the three-time feature winner. John Probanich in car 11 looking for his first checkered flag. Then it's Matt Smith of New Eagle, Pennsylvania. Car number three known as the Nuclear Banana making a four-car battle up front. Matt Smith takes over third very quickly from Perbanich, who was challenging for the lead just a lap or two ago. Bacalon has a high, and we have trouble just behind the leaders in turn two. Bo Glemba spins. He's fourth in the standings coming into tonight. Another car is backwards behind him. It's the five of Jim Nicola, the former champion. On Perbanich, Matt Smith and Bob ship to the green flag. 17 laps remaining. Battle develops quickly behind the lead duo for the fourth position. Champion Adam Kostelnik has joined at a three-car fight with Matt Smith, Bob Ship, and they all three have closed on third place running John Probanich in the 11. Light contact made between the front bumper of Smith's three and the rear bumper of Probanich's 11 car. Pervanich skates away a little bit as Smith has to back off, nearly stacking up Kostelnik and Ship into turn number four. Wheel to wheel, Bob Ship in 04, last year's Charger champion. Two time and defending modified champion, now Adam Kostelnik in the 60 car. Moving to the high side for Ship in this battle for the fifth position. Kostelnik completes the pass with Smith in fourth, Pervanich in third. Nicola still second, Bacalon still leading. There hasn't been a full car length separating the top two drivers in all six laps of, of this event so far. Turn number two, we have a problem at the inside retaining wall. Tom Frank in car six in turn two has spun. The Ohio rookie driver will continue on and we stay green flag racing. Leaders crossing the scoring line to begin working lap seven as the rookie is out of harm's way. Mike Bacalon in the 98 with now a two or three car length lead, his biggest advantage of the race. Bacalon third in the standings by only one point to George Nicola, who's second on the racetrack and second in the championship standings, while Matt Smith, the veteran, makes a move on John Probanich. Smith in car three from New Eagle, Pennsylvania. And Probanich in the 11 as they both squeeze by the Tom Frank car, which slowed after the spin. Okay. Kostelnik, and the leaders make contact. The lead battle has now. And a caution flag will negate all that action up front. The leaders made contact in turn four and both slid backwards to join the Matt Smith-John Probanich battle. But Tom Frank has stopped the six car in the center of the back straight, bringing out this caution on lap number six. Bacalon and George P. Nicola leading John Probanich, Matt Smith and Adam Kostelnik back to the green. The leaders made contact on the last green flag lap completed. 
have their tempers cooled down. Who was at fault? Will there be retaliation in the final 14 laps of the season? In the Smail, Pontiac GMC modifies in this battle for the first on the racetrack for second in the championship standings. Back on in the Froggy 98. George Nicola in the 97. Mike Bacalon, the 2002 modified champion, 2000 street stock champion, George Nicola. Battling at the front of this field. Probanich and Matt Smith continue their fight for third. And more contact made in the lead battle as Smith challenges Probanich. More bumper tag from Nicola and Bacalon as they entered the back straightaway. Now in turn three and headed for turn four. All the top four spots remain unchanged as they hit the scoring line to begin working lap 11 and Nicola switches to the high lane. No more trying to pry Bacalon out of the low side. Nicola's gonna try it on the top. Up against the outside retaining wall into turn three, Bacalon. Ease is ahead for about a half car length lead as turn two is a site for a problem again. Jim Nicola in the five has spun to a stop in the center of turn number two. And as the caution flag waves on lap 11, he pulls that machine away under his own power. With nine laps remaining in the Smail Pontiac GMC modified feature. Last of the season, Mike Bacalon, George Nicola lead him to the green flag fighting for the win and fighting for second in the championship standings with John Probanich third and Matt Smith in fourth. Challenged by Matt Smith to the outside of John Probanich. He will not accomplish a pass through turn four. Up front, Nicola's going to try the high line again, thinks better of it, and tucks into the rear of Bacalon's car, and now swings to the inside. After two laps of high side attempts, George Nicola changes grooves on the speedway, but still finds himself in the second position as they approach the scoring line and begin working lap number 13 of 20. George Nicola trying every lane on the speedway, try and force his way around Mike Bacalon. Bacalon, three times a feature winner. Nicola with four wins on the season. Probanich makes contact with the second place car looking for his first feature win. Probanich has been the red hot driver the last four or five weeks of competition. He's been leading laps, finishing in the top five, winning four heat races. And the East McKeesport driver in third now has closed in on George Nicola who's looking to make a winning pass on Mike Bacalon with Matt Smith watching from fourth in car three. Top four cars nose to tail on the speedway with five laps to go. The Smale Pontiac GMC modified season is coming to a close in dramatic fashion. Adam Kostelnik's championship number 60 car has pulled off the racetrack. Luckily, he clinched that title two weeks ago. It's up to Mike Bacalon, your leader in the 98, and George Nicola in the 97 to slug it out for second and third in the point standings. Matt Smith again looking half groove higher than John Probanich, but unable to make a pass with three laps to go. Top four cars under a blanket, nose to tail, up front. Mike Bacalon has competed in pure stocks, street stocks, pro stocks, and has found a home in the modified division, winning the championship title in 2002. He's holding off George Nicola to try and tie Nicola with four wins each, as Matt Smith finally finds the high groove to his liking enough to clear the 11 of John Probanich and take over third position. The nuclear banana on the move, and quickly reeling in Nicola as the white flag is waving. Top four car still nose to tail with only one lap left in the season. Light contact in the battle for the lead. Light contact from Smith to the rear bumper of Nicola. Down the back straight and into the final two turns of 2005. North Versailles, Pennsylvania veteran Mike Bacalon wins his fourth feature over Nicola Smith for Vantage. And coming home in fifth, it's Bo Glemba in car 99. Mail 
SmailAuto.com for all the latest information on the Smail Auto family of cars and service. Smail Pontiac GMC is located on Route 30 in Greensburg. And with the best burnout of 2005 to celebrate his victory, we will welcome Mike Bacalon for the fourth time this season. He's out of the car and can hear you, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Bacalon. We have a Subway gift certificate for you for that feature win. We've seen four or five different drivers celebrate with a burnout this season, and I give yours the highest marks so far. You can tell those tires aren't going to be used ever again. Well, that's right. Tonight's the last night for those tires. You know, uh, I couldn't have did it better tonight. You know, I mean, we had to stay in front of Georgie for points, and I know in the first couple laps it was pretty exciting side by side, but I was, I was hoping something would happen and I could get in front of him and uh, took a caution to get in front of him. After that, I knew uh, we had a really good car off the corner, but it started getting loose later in the race, and uh, if I slipped up, I knew he was there, so it was just a good hard race. It was very exciting for the fans, and tell us about that moment in turn four when your cars almost locked together, both cars sideways, and then everybody's saved by a caution flag waving for a separate incident. Uh, that was just Will. Um, he was trying to wheel his p car past mine. I was trying to will mine staying in front of his. Uh, we both went in the corner, and neither one of us wanted to give up anything. So like you said, we got together, and uh, it would have hurt us both a little bit. Luckily, the caution came out, and uh, it made it a little bit more spectacular for the fans, right? That's what it's about. <laughs> and for tonight, now second in the point standings, how about a chance to thank your sponsors and crew for this near championship season? Yeah, I really got to thank Froggy. Uh, without them, you know, I mean, we wouldn't even be here racing probably. Uh, stage tire, uh, Lester, the engine guy, I can't say enough about Lester. Lester, you know, he gives me a motor week after week. Some nights it's not the best motor, but it gets me around the racetrack and I never have any failures. So, I mean, I'm just happy to be competitive. The rest of the crew, Steve-O, Little Nick, Berger, uh, Curtis Stewart, I mean, everybody comes to the racetrack and help. My wife, she ain't here again tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank her for sure. And Really, I want to thank all the fans. I see you guys, I mean, they run the late miles first, tried to rush it through. You guys have stayed and watched this race. I hope you've enjoyed it. There he is with his fourth win of the season, a veteran of all divisions at the Speedway, Mike Bacalon, finding a home in the Modifieds. Saluting the fans with the car horns on the final night of action in the last feature race of 2005, the Advance Auto Parts American Flyer Division, row number three. Richie Miller in car number 87 to the inside, and Gene Greco driving car number 22 from Scottsdale, Pennsylvania on the outside. Last row, both feature winners, the 34 of Aaron Minjock from Greenock, Pennsylvania, and the 16 of track champion for 2005, Ed Deneen of Wilkinsburg. Eight lap feature event, bring down the curtain on 2005. Here's the green flag. We're already three wide on the front straight. Matt Gardner passing three and four cars at the wave of the green flag. First time feature winner two weeks ago. And out in front with the Dodge. Behind him, Roger Bryan and Bill Oldham. Bryan in car 12 lost the left front tire at the end of his heat race. Has that car repaired. And we're three wide again out of turn number four. Richie Miller to the inside. Bill Oldham on the outside. Hangs on to second position at the scoring line. Four wide back in the pack with Aaron Minjock. Trading paint with Kevin Ludwig in the 51. And Gene Greco in the 22. Ed Deneen's going to look to the high side. Three wide back of the pack action. Deneen thinks better of it. Pulls back in and lets Gene Greco have the position. He will now challenge Aaron Minjock as they're going to be sticker to sticker in turn number four. Minjock with one feature win, Deneen with 13 wins, now nearly three wide again. Gene Greco on the high side in 22, hasn't seen a checkered flag this season. Has a position taken away by Deneen. Working lap number three of eight now with Roger Bryan in the fourth spot in car 12. Then up to the top three with Richie Miller, the five-time winner. The Murphys 2, you pull it number 87 car, just in front of him in second, Bill Oldham. Oldham having his best run of the season right now as he closes in on the on leader, Matt Gardner. 
Last season, Oldham had two victories and finished second in the point standings. This season, Oldham has not taken a checkered flag in heat or feature racing. Meanwhile, Gardner, in only his fifth start earlier this season, got a feature win. And his car number seven is poised for a repeat trip to victory lane as he's only raced a half season as a rookie. Oldham spinning the car in turn one down to the grass and his best run of the season has taken several notches backwards as Roger Bryan in fifth now blows by the five of Oldham who's well off the pace breaking the back end loose in a front wheel drive car and losing several spots is Oldham. Now Roger Bryan's 12 in the fourth position in front of him, track champion Ed Deneen, who started last in car 16, now holding down the third spot. Then it's Richie Miller, who's second in the point standings in car 87. And Matt Gardner, the newcomer to the division, seeing the white flag. Matt Gardner, whose average of starts to wins is going to be very impressive as we close out the season in the Advance Auto Parts American Flyers division. The Mopar fans are getting ready to cheer for car number seven. The driver, who hails from Ruffsdale, Pennsylvania, will now see his second career checkered flag. Matt Gardner with another win. Richie Miller hangs on to second over Ed Deneen in third. Roger Bryan fourth and Bill Oldham recovering to fifth. We're going to take a moment now to get a second interview with Matt Gardner, the winner of the Advance Auto Parts American Flyers finale this season. Matt, now let's keep track of this. How many starts to how many wins? Seven starts, two wins. That's a pretty impressive record for a driver who's only got a half season of experience. I expect we're going to see more of this car and you here at the Speedway next year. You're definitely going to see more of me, maybe in a different car. Are you planning to climb up the NASCAR ladder perhaps next season? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to move up. I'm not sure, to, not sure to what, but I'm definitely going to move up something. Well, you've had a lot of fun here. I can tell every time we see you in victory lane, big smiles with two wins in seven starts. How about, how about talking about the crew and the sponsors? Yeah, I'd like to thank my sponsors again, Kansas City Saloon, Westside Lube and Tire for all my tires, 10 graphics for my graphics, my pit crew, Jay Matthews, Dennis Oxen, my parents, Art and Carol, my wife, Christine, it's, it's fantastic to win. Thank you. He closes out the season with his second career victory. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Gardner.